Hey, Professor David Stuckler here. Today, I'm really excited to introduce you to a new AI tool I've been checking out, and it's really quite different from a lot of the AI tools that are coming out for researchers, and that this is not a tool that aims to substitute in some way for human thought or replace some of the essential activities and things you can do as a human, but rather it does what I like best with AI, is it takes an essential task and makes it faster, and so much faster that I feel like I've just lost and wasted so much time in my research without it. So the tool I'm talking about today is called HiDoc H1, which does a lot of essential things. It can be the speaker, it can be the microphone for your computer. You're gonna start wanting to use this in a lot of your online meetings. But beyond that, it has some essential functionality for notes and especially for qualitative researchers. So if you're a qualitative researcher, you're thinking about qualitative research, you're not going to want to miss this because this is it's incredible how much time, headache, and frustration you can save in your qualitative research with this. As you know, this channel is committed to open access tools and this is not an open access tool, but this is, I, I see as an essential piece of software. So if you're doing statistical analysis, you're gonna want R, you're gonna want Stata, SPSS something like that. If you're doing qualitative research, I would go so far as to put this in the same category and I'll explain why here in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna briefly review the tool, its functionality, show you how to use it and show you how it compares with what else I've been using for note taking. And then I'm gonna review some of the things that are maybe some areas of development about it that I think can be enhanced and I, I feel like will be enhanced. And we're gonna do a side by side comparison and see really how it performs on note taking. So again, it's gonna be useful for qualitative researchers, but really anybody who might be sitting in a classroom listening to a lecture with a professor like myself wanting to take notes. I think the days of scurriously scribbling to try to capture what a professor is saying are, are essentially gone. So uh, let's dive straight in. So when talking about qualitative research, I'm really referring to those deep observations we get ourselves from observing people interact kind of passively trying to understand situations that they go through and the meanings it has for them. And others where we try to elicit those understandings, perhaps directly through chatting uh, with participants um, and not just being a passive observer ourselves. Either way, these qualitative interviews really differ from quantitative research and that, well, we're, we're not necessarily quantifying things, even though uh, we could do so. Uh, but really our data is text. Our data ends up being the conversations and that text, is really difficult to get in, in a few ways because you need to be able to record, record with accuracy. And once you have that recording, you then need to take a critical step and transcribe that to make your data set. This is incredible incredibly time consuming. It sounds so simple. Okay, I'm just gonna record a conversation and then write it all up. Well, uh, back in the day, that, that is what you would do. You would manually uh, you would manually record. I remember having an old, you know, shows my age, tape recorder that I would then go write up and transcribe the notes. Now, if you have a thick accent, I was interviewing people in India, some of those accents I had difficulty following. Uh, months go by, I've done hundreds of interviews, couldn't reconstruct what was being said. Other times, I might have multiple speakers. I was doing a focus group, I couldn't remember who said what. And sometimes the voices were, it was a little grainy, a little crackly, I couldn't distinguish you know, which speaker was saying which thing. Uh, all of that is now beginning to change. Now, I've really shifted a lot of my qualitative research online for the simple reason that is so much easier to do rather than go out in the field, which oftentimes is optimal. There are actually a lot of advantages to working online because you can standardize the interviews. You have the same interview environment and context. You can reduce a lot of the variables that can create bias in your study by ensuring that you're conducting the interview in the same way, you're collecting data in the same way, uh, you're going through the same process of obtaining consent. And again, it, it just increases your reach and your response rate, as a lot of people might be too busy to organize a meeting in a different place. You've gotta meet them where they're at in, in their lives or find a point, mutual point of encounter. Um, it's much more easily to schedule and coordinate. But like I said, the, the big issue has been transcribing. And that's where the HIDOC H1 really comes in. So what I've been encouraging my students to do is to perform their interviews using Zoom. Uh, now, the real payoff of Zoom is it has kind of a closed caption, like you can even turn on with this video at the bottom, that's gonna give you kind of a text interpretation of what I'm saying. Now, if you've tried to put that on with me, I've had some students complain that, well, it's kind of imperfect and that you get a lot of errors and mistakes 
being made with that. Um, and so Zoom I recommend because it's so much better at automatically closed captioning and taking the notes. With a caveat, you need a premium subscription to Zoom and you need to have some cloud space because the normal recording of Zoom won't do it. You actually need to go and get it to upload to the cloud and then Zoom has some processing tools that will spit out the audio as well as a transcript for you. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how well that transcript does based on a meeting that I had recently. This is where High Notes really, really shines. Firstly, this thing sits nicely on your desk and integrates into what you're already doing, much like Zoom. But what it does is it records better. All right, just full stop. It just, it's a better recording than Zoom of, of the voice and the text. And what you get from it is a detailed transcription that goes beyond what Zoom can do and that it can actually identify and distinguish different speaker voices. And that's because this is integrated to be powered with AI. So if you want to record with this tool, simply here, you just click the record button and I'm going to do that here now. And that is going to start creating a template of what's been said. And through its AI powers, also able, I've tested this on different accents, it's able to differentiate accents and reconstruct what's being said with higher quality than I think in some ways I might have even been able to do myself. Again, using some language algorithms to fill in the gaps and probabilistically ascertain what most likely uh, has been said. You can adjust the degree to which that, that fills in, but I, I find it really, really helpful. So let me give you a side by side here. So after you've made your recording, all you're going to do is come into this High Notes platform and you'll see my different recordings. Uh, you will connect the High Doc speaker to your computer, click connect, and it is going to start automatically transcribing and uploading your recordings. So the one that I just made here, we'll go take a look at in a second. Um, but for now, I want to come back and show you the way that I've been recommending students do their interviews, which has been through Zoom. And so the typical way that you're going to go there is, let me pull up Zoom for a second. Here I've got Zoom. You will record, but in Zoom, you'll hit the option to record to the cloud. At that point, if you have the premium Zoom service, you will get a download with different items. You'll get an audio file and you'll get Zoom's transcription of the file. So let me show you an example of what this looks like so you can compare a bit side by side. So you'll get this VTT file. I tend to open this up in Word and it's gonna look a little bit like this. Um, now you'll notice this won't differentiate uh, different speakers quite, quite right. And it also captures a lot of strange things. Like you can see on a call, no one said anything about aggressive Canada yeah, and I just ready in case of those children. It, this is very, very frustrating because these things are just, you know yourself, are wrong. And oftentimes, if you've just done 50 to 100 interviews, you come back and look at this, you don't know what's been said. And you don't want to upload this to, to your file. Often in qualitative research, you might upload in transparency your full data set as an appendix or web appendix so that anybody can check your assumptions, um, your analysis of your data. Um, so you're gonna have to manually go back through all of this. And so even though this starts you and gets you maybe 50% of the way there, you still have a lot to do to go back and listen to each recording and clean this up. So let me come back to the real power of HiDoc. So here I have an example in HiDoc of a meeting summary that I had with a student. And you can see it's identified different speakers from different voices, which is fantastic. And so it, it'll go through and you'll see here, I, I'm not gonna go through all this, but this is a much more accurate conversation going on. And it, it right, I can jump through to the different voice marks. I can replay it. I can copy and paste. I can spit this out, export it in different file formats with the option here. I, I mean, this is just brilliant. Um, the other thing that's nice is you also get a summary here that if you're creating a note from your meeting, you can actually spit out and send, in my case, I might send notes of my meetings to a student afterwards so that student can focus with me in our conversation together rather than having to fiercely scribble notes, which can distract them as they're focusing on writing a note, they're not necessarily listening to the next thing that you're trying to say or the point that you're trying to make. Um, so the power of, of this AI summary to identify the speakers, to get the transcript, I mean, if Zoom was maybe 50% riddled with errors, um, this is maybe 
85, 90%. And it's just so seamless for me to go back in in the audio file because it's integrated to find, oh, wait a second, I don't think this word's right. Let me see, oh, it's right here. I can replay that and touch it up very quickly before moving it over to NVivo, Atlas TI, one of the other analysis platforms. So let me give you an example from what I just recorded here so you can get a sense of how accurate and simple that can be. As you can see, it's captured me and what I've said. Let me reread it and uh, see, you'll see there's still some rough parts around the edges, but it's just so much better than what's come before that uh, these things can be easily forgiven. So here, and through his AI power, he's also able to, I've tested this in different accents, he's able to differentiate accents and reconstruct what's being said with higher quality than I think in some ways I might have even been able to do myself, um, using some language algorithms to fill in the gaps and probably probabilistically ascertain what most likely has been said. Um, you can adjust the degree to which that fills in, but I find it really, really helpful. So let me give you a side by side here. So as you can see, this is pretty close to the transcript. I mean, yes, if you're doing this manually by hand, you could get this more accurate on the first go, but how much time has this just saved you? It's incredible. The other thing I really like is again, um, it summarized kind of the key points that I was already making. I mean, I can even see you turn on a YouTube video, you hit this transcribe button as you're playing it, and this will just summarize the YouTube video for you. Imagine you do that, you get a friend to record your class, and you just get the take home summary from it just from hitting record um, without having to go through it. I mean, often I'm watching YouTube videos in double speed, or right, a lot of people are shifting now to getting their information visually from watching videos rather than reading books. This is like having instant cliff notes available to you. So I'm already finding numerous applications for me as a professor. I think as a student, uh, you're going to find this tremendously helpful. A couple other things I want to point out. So as a speaker, look, it's probably not something you're going to want to use to listen to music. You could do, but it's really not set up for that. It's optimized so you can hit uh, vocal audio frequencies. So don't expect any booming bass. It just isn't designed for that. The other thing that's really nice when you're on Zoom calls, you've all been on perhaps these online meetings where somebody's audio starts bleeding back in. And that's a problem with a lot of speakers. This actually has a red control knob where you can adjust that bleed. It has noise cancellation built in so that the people on the other end are going to hear really high quality audio from you with out noise bleeding back in. As a microphone, look, I mean, I'm using a lapel mic here. That's gonna always deliver you higher quality um, and needs not be expensive. This microphone is the same as using a microphone on your webcam and others. It's just not, it, it's good, it works. It's just not really where this product shines and stands out, which as I said, in sum, I think is a game changer for qualitative research. I'm about to launch my next qualitative research project uh, with one of my postdocs and 100%. Where this is what we are going to use. We have shifted from Zoom to this platform. When buying HiDoc H1, you do also get included lifetime free transcription service with High Notes, which, by the way, is powered by ChatGPT. But again, those details are in the link below. Uh, again, the time savings alone of hours and hours with a higher quality that you can achieve, I believe completely justifies the expense. I'm personally using some of our grant research budgets to allocate it towards it. And some of your departments and schools may have similar kinds of resources that you can invest uh, to up the quality of your research. Our sponsors also want you to know that it has 11 high spec interfaces, including two HDMI ports of two and a half gigabyte per second ethernet, fast charging, two SD card slots, and it's a practical product for teachers and students to do academic research and work at home in the office. Through its AI, it can also integrate to Google Docs, uh, Notion, other tools, and again, our sponsors want to remind you that it's a productivity tool. As I said, AI, if done right, should save you time. It's just not really tapping in yet to the power of what we do essentially as humans, but it's a support. It's a co-pilot, it's an aide, it's a research assistant. And I'm really excited to see what this new generation of AI powered software and hardware can do that opens up possibilities that never before uh, were, were possible. For a grad student, that might mean instead of just looking at 10 interviews, you can now easily crank out 30 or 40 
focus on the science, not on the laborious, cumbersome, time-consuming tasks of manually transcribing your data. Guys, if you haven't already, join my Facebook group and stay tuned because I'm gonna bring you the best, uh, no nonsense of what I believe AI and its power has to offer you both in hardware and software. And as ever, if you want to learn the right way to do things as a researcher, which I always recommend before integrating the power of AI, um, be sure to tap our free master classes on things like lit reviews, statistical analysis, qualitative research, academic writing, many of the things as well. There are soft skills like productivity that were just not taught in our universities, but you need to know and you need to get right. And you may not have a system for doing which we've developed. So look forward to seeing you there. We can be in touch in the DM and uh, you're not going to want to miss this next video on AI I've got for you.